In a recent 7-2 ruling, the United States Supreme Court ruled in favor of the CFPB. What does this mean to lenders, banks, and the consumers they serve? In today's episode, we'll do a deep dive. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children, 18 plus. You are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC John Coleman. Yo, what's poppin'? Tomorrow, you and I hop on a flight to Las Vegas, Nevada, Mastermind Summit. Here we come. I'm excited about the summit, but honestly, every time I land in Vegas, you know the first thing I want to do? Smoke a bowl. Fucking leave. Smoke a bowl, John. We know how you roll. That's anywhere I go, Dustin. Yeah, but you get stuck in those airplanes for like three hours. So I turn to my best from the magic mushroom to help me get through those tough times, Dustin. So the first thing you want to do as soon as you 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 land is leave. I mean, when that you get, quick. It's like you get there, you get a couple free beers, you lose like two hundred fifty dollars immediately on the blackjack table. And then you're like, yo, I'm kind of ready to get the fuck out of here. But, you know, it was this event that we met Lucy the Lender. Shout it out, was, Lucy. It was this event that we met Courtney from the Pacific Northwest. How many? You think right? we're going to bump and anybody again? Raul and so many. Christian and I so know. many other people. It's been a minute. I mean, this was September of 2022. So, yeah, you were, we're going on, what is that, 18, 19 months mm-hmm. since we were last out there for this type of an event. I'm stoked. Dude, I'm bringing 20 people that I work with at the mortgage company are coming out there. Is 60 shirts too many? That's how many I ordered. 60 t-shirts? Yeah. Woo, we. Yeah, we're going to have a booth set up. We're going to, Nikki's going to be there. I Jacqueline, know. you, the me, f- Mark. How did we back our way? What are we doing? It was like, hey, no trust idea. me. I, I know, hey, trust me, we know what we're doing. Yes. Okay, here's a booth. Here's, you know, here's some time on the stage. What else do you guys need? Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a good event. And um, even the even the venue resorts world i looked it up for the first time today i'm i'm actually looking forward to that like last time we were at the palms and not, i'm not knocking the palms but i am the palms is off the strip at least this new hotel is on the strip it's, uh, it's at the end of the strip it is at the end but still um for 125 bucks a night or 150 bucks a night you can't beat shit. it and i'm gonna be straight up honest with you I'm jonesing to gamble. Like I've been watching, I've been watching Instagram reels on really? like rule. I don't even play roulette. I've been watching it's roulette strategies. It's the best. I'm gonna play blackjack, three card poker, and you best believe I'm gonna be rolling some dice. I Preferably, I don't like to roll. I want someone else with a hot hand to roll. Just let me bet. And by bet, I mean like literally Corn every high, roll. Yo, every, every roll. I'm gonna have one. action. I'm gonna have action. You know who's having action? The CFPB. Oh, okay. The CFPB is back in play. And um, this is going to be interesting. Like, very interesting. I don't know if many people know this, so it's going to be a geeked out episode specifically for my mortgage um, friends, the friends in the mortgage industry. Let me just gloss over. Okay, I'm ready now. Go. Are you ready to go? No, this is interesting stuff. What does the CFPB stand for? I ask you this every time, and every time you give me a look like, don't put me on the spot. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. My man. Yeah. July 21st, 2011. What? Is is when it came about. It was um, born through the Dodd-Frank Act. Mm. And the Dodd-Frank Act was the congressional response to the financial collapse of 2008. Wow. Yep. And for the first time, our legislatures, elected officials, Mm -hmm. decided that we needed to do more to protect the consumer against evildoers. Consumers are dumb and they'll be led by any hand that feeds them. So now that said, the CFPB (laughs) has been controversial for the past now 13 years almost. And they've been controversial because they tend to create policy through enforcement. Mm. Okay, so creating policy through enforcement, my best analogy I could ever come up with, imagine driving on the interstate and the, 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 the speed limit sign doesn't give you a number. It just says drive safe. <clears throat> so this is what the CFPB has done. They've drafted these, these rules and these, these regulations, and they're basically as clear as drive safe. Ambiguous. There you go, John. That's a good word. Is that your word of the day? I guess. You remember Pee Wee Herman had a word of the day? Yeah. You remember watching that show when you were a jail. kid? Yeah, it's called jail now. No, I think he passed away. He passed away this year. Yeah, R.I.P. Paul Rubens. Nonetheless, imagine driving on the interstate and, and being told to drive safe. 
No, we want to be told drive 55, drive 75, drive 80. If you're up in uh, South Dakota, their speed limit on their interstate's 80 damn miles an hour. It's a fun place to drive. Wow. And even in some interstates, I've seen a minimum. Like, hey, look, you have to do at least 45, mm-hmm. but you can't go over 70. Where the CFPB has said, just drive safe. Well, then if you do 85, mm-hmm. you get a speeding ticket. What the hell? You told me to drive safe. I am driving safe. Correct. Like, oh, well, that's not safe. That's reckless. That's subjective, what you're telling me, CFPB. Okay, so for the past 12, 13 years, the CFPB has has um, been knocked. They've been uh, ridiculed. They've made fun of. They, they haven't been in favor of certain lending institutions, banks, financial institutions, et cetera, because they don't give clear, concise rules. They basically give ambiguous rules. Mm-hmm. And then they they allow the banks and lenders to go out and push the envelope, push the, press the boundaries. Mm-hmm. And then if they screw up, they come in and get their hand slapped. But sometimes getting your hand slapped could cost you tens of millions of dollars. Sounds just like professional NBA and NFL referees after they miss all these calls. Yeah, how about referees? I know you're not a big baseball fan, but um, Angel Hernandez finally has retired. He has been the shittiest umpire of all time. Yes, yes. <laughs> So um, I read that this morning and I was like, thank goodness. Um, so no, so let's, let's get back onto the CFPB. And, and so that, that's, that's where people's angst has, mm-hmm. has been aimed towards them in a negative manner. Well, the reason why they were, they were in front of the Supreme Court, and by the way, seven to two, that's basically like, get, like getting your, your ass handed to you. So, sweep. so yeah, so like seven to two is okay. It's especially with this particular Supreme Court that we have, because most things are like five, four. Mm-hmm. Okay. So seven to two ruled in the CFPB's favor, essentially there was a lawsuit stating that their funding was not constitutional. So the mechanism and method that the, that the U.S. government uses to pay for the CFPB to be in operation was being argued that it was not constitutional. Well, a appeals court had actually claimed and, and had stated and agreed that it wasn't constitutional. That's why it went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said, nope, appeals court, we're going to overrule you. And the funding is constitutional. It's also been debated whether or not having one director was constitutional and the way that that director was put into power was constitutional. So this particular Supreme Court ruling, I don't recall reading anything where it talked about needing to have a three panel uh, directorship instead of a sole directorship and that the director had to be, be confirmed versus the director being appointed. Right now, it's one director, and he or she, because we've had had both, will be appointed by the current administration, the current president. Okay. So all that said, the reason why this is of relevance in today's day and age, here we are, June of 2024, is you got to think, if you're the CFPB, for the past however many months, you've probably been sitting back. You've probably been very reactionary, but you have not been overly proactive because you're like, yo, I don't know if it's worth me starting this investigation. I don't know if it's worth me doing these audits. I don't know if it's worth me going into this particular company and asking to see their books if I'm going to be ruled to be not constitutional, at which point it's just going to be a bunch of wasted resources and wastes of money. So they've been sitting back, just kind of doing their thing. Anything they had to do, they did. But anything proactive, they didn't do. Now, all of a sudden, they've just been given the green light. They've just been told, hey, guys, you're good to go. Keep rocking in the free world. <laughs> At which point, lenders, banks, financial institutions, you're now put on notice. You may have thought you were getting away with driving 90 miles an hour. You may have thought driving 90 miles an hour, to use that same analogy, was deemed safe and legal. And you keep doing it because nobody has been pulling you over. Nobody's been flagging you down. Nobody's been saying otherwise. In fact, like in, in, in that example, you may drive 90, but then you find out that your best friend, he just got popped for a thousand dollar speeding ticket because he was doing 90. And you're like, damn, I guess I need to quit doing 90 or I need to be willing to pay a thousand dollar speeding ticket. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's, that's how this like this regulation through enforcement, this policy through enforcement kind of works. It's Mm -hmm. like, look, I can't get all of the bad actors, but if I can pop two or three of them and word gets out that that behavior is, is unacceptable, then maybe 
the industries that the CFPB regulates mm -hmm. will start to self-monitor a little bit. Now they're just going to get more clever and more devious. Everybody knows that. Uh, to a certain degree, but I don't know, man. You find out like your friend just got a speeding ticket. Aren't you a little bit more like... No, I'll just take a different route. <laughs> Come on, man. You That's <laughs> what you mean. That's the American way, Dustin. Oh, you fair got enough. stopped on 434. I'm taking 417. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. On my end, yeah, yeah. if I find out my, my buddy got, got popped yeah. uh, for a speeding ticket. Maybe drive slower. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to dial it back a little bit or yeah. just, just you know get ready to uh, shell out a few hundred dollars right. that I don't have. Um, but no, so it, it's like everyone's been put on notice. And here's what was really cool is in the mortgage industry, the, the mortgage industry just had their... Um, annual it's called the secondary conference so secondary is basically the business mm -hmm. behind doing loans mm -hmm. so sales and origination is what most of us know it's what you and i primarily talk about on the podcast yeah. and on the youtube channel but secondary markets like okay what happens to that loan once it has been funded okay it gets packaged and sold and turned into security and how are interest rates determined and how do mortgage mortgage companies hedge locking in loans with with making sure they also lock in their profits all secondary so it's in second largest conference of the year. It's in Manhattan every single year. We're like NBA annual that you got to attend mm -hmm. with me several times. You and I have been in San Diego. We've been in Philadelphia. This year we're going to Denver. Nope, this one is always in Manhattan. And it's a really cool one if you get a chance to go to, if you like to geek out and nerd out. And typically if you're there, here was my experience. I had my first breakfast at 7 a.m. I had my second breakfast at 9 a.m. I met with an attorney at 1030. I had my first lunch at, at 1130, my second lunch at 130. Mm -hmm. Then I met someone for drinks at four, dinner at six, dinner at eight, drinks again at 10, go to bed at midnight, rinse, repeat for three days. That's awesome. Where do I sign up? <laughs> you would hate that. <laughs> All of that human interaction, <laughs> oh. those conversations, oh. and the conversations for the most part are mostly business conversations. What is TLOP? What does that stand for? What do you do? Well, I wish it was that. Typically... <laughs> Typically, if I'm at secondary, I'm representing the mortgage company, right? So I'm there with Waterstone Mortgage, and we're talking about, you know, how we can help Waterstone be a better client, or 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 we can talk about uh, things that these particular investors can offer to Waterstone to help us gotcha. serve our communities better, right? Mm -hmm. Or it's, it's one of those, hey, how are we doing? What's coming up? We talk about regulatory changes, technology changes, compliance changes, et cetera, mm -hmm. business model changes, you name it. But the whole purpose is to check in Hey, how are we doing? Let me tell you how you're doing. How can we work together more? How can we work together better? Let's keep working together. Hug, kiss, have a drink, move, rinse, mm. repeat, right? That's kind of, that is what is transpiring. But at this particular event, they always bring in a big speaker and they bring in people from the industry. Well, they had, they had uh, Rohit Chopra. So Chopra is the leader of the CFPB. Now, he is the director. We call them directors, not leaders. Uh, director of the CFPB. And he seems like, by the way, I'm putting it out there in the universe. Rohit, you seem like a dude I would love to have a beer with. Mm. Maybe even two. And if you don't drink beers, I'll drink old fashions. If you don't like old fashions, then I can be talked into a, a Hendrix gin martini with extra blue cheese olives. But um, director Chopra is someone that seems like I would enjoy getting to know on a personal and professional level, which mm -hmm. he has a position that he, he, he gets a lot of you know, stares and daggers thrown his way and, you know, people cutting their eyes and huffing and puffing around him. But it's like somebody has to play that role. And the CFPB does have a, a particular place in our society. They are there to protect the consumer. It's not just about against bad lenders, by the way. Like, like think about um, any abuses that could be done with credit cards, with debt collection, with um, payday advance mm. companies, with for-profit higher education. Like, the CFPB is to to protect the consumer, um, to make sure that that corporate America is not preying on them, and that things are being properly disclosed, and that um, no one's being taken advantage of. Right for the most part, that's that's their mission, and so he states in so he speaks right. He speaks at at the um, at the annual secondary, and here's what he basically said. For the past X amount of months, we've been sitting back. We've been reserved. We've been plotting and planning. We've been putting together our um, agenda of what's priority, but we haven't done a whole lot. Well, now that the Supreme Court has ruled in our favor, this is now going to give us 
the, the, so they're going to open the floodgates and let us go after what it is that we think we have to look into. So these are the three things that they're going to look into. And this is important for the mortgage industry to be aware of. And I'm going to offer you the way that it makes sense to me with a little bit of my commentary, but that's about it. Okay. So the first thing that the CFPB is really worried about as it pertains to mortgage actually isn't origination. It isn't on the sales side. It's on the servicing side Mm. because the bulk of their complaints, which they've received in their existence, well over 4 million complaints. Yo, what? People love to complain, John. I know. Think about that. Very rarely do we as a society slow down to say thank you or you're doing a good job or thanks for delivering uh, what I expected you to, to deliver. But the minute you don't, the minute the minute you have a bad day, you slip up, there's human error, all hell breaks four loose, million, right? Four million complaints? Four million That's complaints. like the new 80-20 world. 80% of those complaints came from 100% of the Karens. <laughs> so that's when the 20% came from other people. <laughs> I love it. Uh, absolutely love it. Hey, what's the opposite? Like, what's 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 the male version a can, of a Karen? A can, a can, a can, yep. Can, I, and, and then when they have kids, they're called, they're not called kids, they're called kits. Karen's and Ken's in training. Wow. So see, this goes deep, bro. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay. So the first thing on the CFPB's radar as it pertains to mortgage is going to be mortgage servicing. Mm-hmm. Look, I got to be honest. I think a lot of these complaints are are Frivolous. valid frustrations from the consumer, but it just comes from a place of inexperience and in a place of, of ignorance and in, in the best case way, because consumers don't do what I do for a living. Okay. I have two mortgages because I own two properties and every single year I have to deal with my servicing being sold. Mm -hmm. I have to deal with my escrow account being rebalanced, my real estate taxes being paid, my homeowner's insurance being paid. At the same time, my taxes are going up and at the same time, my, my insurance has doubled. And oh, by the way, this year was an interesting year for the Owen household. I've owned the home that I currently live in for 14 years. Let's go. It has been my homesteaded property, my primary residence for all of those years. All of my mail goes to this house. All of the utilities are in my personal name. Yet somehow the county that I live in, Seminole County, Florida, Mm -hmm. Seminole County just went ahead and um, removed my homestead exemption. Mm. And as if I don't live in the house anymore. You don't need this. As if those utilities aren't in my name and that I don't pay them. Actually, I don't, my wife pays them, but that we don't pay that bill every month on time. Mm -mm. As if that's not like. That's where my driver's license is. Nope. Like my whole life goes to that house. Not anymore. And all of a sudden I saw that my tax bill went from $4,800 to $9,800. <laughs> okay. Well, think about this. I help run a mortgage company for a living. I've been in this industry for 20 years. You know a thing or two. I know a thing or two. <laughs> and even that was frustrating. And still, I don't feel like it's totally unresolved. Like I feel like somewhere along the lines, someone owes me money or somewhere along the lines, I have been refunded too much money. So this has been an open query that I've been dealing with in my quote unquote free time for the past 60 to 90 days Mm. and something that I spotted. No one else spotted it. I spotted it and I almost overlooked it. Think about that. Like I know what I'm looking for and I almost overlooked it. So the CFPB is going to look into servicing and I'm going to tell them if they're willing to call me like go Rohit. Hey, Um, I don't think they're going to find anything that they can make it better. Like, I just don't think it's a regulatory thing. I don't think there's bad actors. I just think it's it's a cumbersome process that people don't do full-time, meaning consumers mm-hmm. don't, homeowners don't. And, and because we include things like taxes and homeowners insurance in the payment of most mortgages, it adds a, a new um, element. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, a new wrinkle to people's payments. Like, if, if we did away with that, then all of a sudden, consumers would still have to deal with their insurance going up, their taxes going up. They would still have to deal with not having enough money to pay their taxes yeah, or their yeah, insurance. Yeah. And it would make it way riskier for the lending world. I like, think about that. Like we as banks and lenders, the real reason why we escrow or include taxes and insurance in most people's payments is to protect us. Because if I lent John Coleman money and John Coleman owes me a quarter million dollars, but he's not paying the tax bill, the county can foreclose on that property, which, um, no, I have a legal interest in that property because John owes me money. Or if John's not keeping that property insured and a hurricane comes through 
and John incurs $200,000 worth of damage on an uninsured property, John just walks away and quits paying me. Let's go. So now I don't get my 250 that John owes me and the asset, the collateral, uh, isn't worth the 250 because it requires all of this repair. Mm -hmm. So that's the main reason why many mortgages include taxes and insurance. It's also a convenience to the consumer because consumers, it's easier to budget for four or 500 bucks a month. It's a lot harder to come up with four grand in November and an extra $1,500 in, in let's just call it April yeah. of the following year. So it's a convenience to them. Like, yes, most lenders in most states, when they collect that money and it sits in your escrow account, they're making interest on your money, John. Now don't, don't worry. They're making 3% interest on your six grand, like maybe 2% interest on your six grand. So they're not getting rich off you, but they take your six grand they multiply it by a hundred thousand mm-hmm. other clients that they're servicing loans for. And there's some interest income to be earned. I believe in California, this is a total rabbit hole, but in California, I think uh, those homeowners, the lenders actually have to, if they make interest, remit the interest back to them, like actually pay them. Mm. So then you'll have certain lenders just won't put California loans in an interest bearing account because they're like, look, I don't want to make interest if I have to pay it to John. So I might as well just put it in a non interest bearing account. So all of that said, Director Chopra states just a week or two ago in Manhattan at the NBA secondary conference that the first concern is with servicing. I'm as dust to know and just some podcast dude that's been working in the mortgage industry for 20 years and owns two homes. I'm going to go and state, I don't think there's a whole lot nefarious being done in servicing. I think consumers complain because it's confusing. Consumers complain because counties screw things up because homeowners insurance companies drop them and other insurance companies double the premium. And then that impacts their payments and they get confused and, and, you know, worried or upset but it's not the servicer's fault, right? That's your county with the taxes. Mm -hmm. That's your insurance company for whatever reasons that your insurance company um, did what they did, whether it's drop you or or double your premium. Um, Things that the CFPB could look at when it comes to servicing is currently servicers charge lenders, I'm sorry, servicers charge borrowers for a payoff statement. Like you wanna pay off your mortgage, Mm -hmm. And you need to get a payoff statement, like an actual like statement that saying, says- Like saying, I paid my shit, I gotta pay you for that? Well, yeah, because a payoff isn't just what you what shows owing on your most recent statement. Because mm-hmm. a payoff may have a, a potential escrow shortage from the year prior. A payoff could have an extra 21 days of interest at X amount of dollars per day. So you, know, you have to order what's called a payoff statement. Now, the CFPB may come and look at lenders and say, that's abusive. You're literally charging people 25 to $50 to produce something that they should get for free because they're a client of yours. Mm -hmm. Or there's definitely certain, um, I would say certain, it's certain, Mm -hmm. certain. Mm -hmm. That's one of the many words that that I mispronounce mispronounce all the time. But there's there's gonna be concern with um, debt collection uh, practices. Like that's a big Mm -hmm. CFPB, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna regulate to make sure that Debt collectors aren't abusive towards those that can't make their payments. Like they want them to be nice, polite, and professional. Well, if you don't want to be abused on the phone, pay your bills. Well, yeah, I mean, that's some people's take. <laughs> but, you know, un- unfortunately. Correct. Life unfortunately, happens. And here's what happens. You put a 100% commission salesperson on the other end and tell them they have a task to do. Yeah. I mean, they certain people, unscrupulous, all they want is that, 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 mm. that riff, that commission, and the things that they say to maybe somebody who doesn't have the money, mm. it's probably not the right thing mm-hmm. to do to the consumer. So anyhow, that's number one. Number two on on their particular list, and um, this is now in no particular order, but the number one was definitely servicing. Like, hey guys, that's what we're looking at as it pertains to mortgage. Mm-hmm. Um, number two though, credit reports. We as an industry were like, hell yes. Yeah. The CFPB has come out and they have stated, in fact, Here's why I want to have a beer with this dude. He even called out FICO because mm. FICO was the number, was like the lead sponsor at this event. And when when uh, Director Chopper was being interviewed, he was talking about the amount of 
fee increases the credit reporting industry has levied onto the onto the lenders and banks over the past two years and how it's impacting the accessibility and the cost of credit to the consumer, he said that's something they have to look into. Like they're concerned, is any of this with the credit agencies uh, monopolistic? Mm. Does it need to be broken up? Is any part of these fee increases abusive? And are they, because they have a potential monopoly in the industry, are they taking full advantage of that with, with how they push these, these increases down to the lenders and the banks and the financial institutions who then guess what they do? Shit flows downhill, John. And they pass it on to the consumer. It gets passed on to the consumer. One way or the other, costs are going to go up. So they're looking at that. And then here's the third thing that the CFPB is going to be interested in. And you and I have talked about this multiple times over the past six to now going on nine months. Okay. Loan officer compensation. Let's go. I mean, most people don't want to go there, John. Most people who tune into this show, they're saying, let's effing not go there, John. It, it needs to be discussed, Dustin. It does need to be discussed. It needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting is that is that the one question was asked to the director of the CFPB, which was, are you currently going to look at whether or not the current LO compensation rules are just? Like, are they fair? Are they accurate? And he said that is currently not on our agenda, but he said he wouldn't take it off the table. Okay, so that's a positive potential carrot to dangle pushing out to 25, 26, 27. But more importantly, we're talking about 24, 25. Mm -hmm. We understand and we recognize that there have been potentially violations, gross negligence, um, foul play, or total disregard for the rules that are put in place as it pertains to loan officer compensation. And we as the CFPB, now that we have been re-empowered with this seven to two vote by the Supreme Court, we will be looking at loan officer compensation. We will be looking at how companies have been compensating how they've been interpreting our rules, how they've been following our rules. Mm -hmm. And if we find any nefarious bad actors who have been blatantly violating, these are my words, by the way, not his. Yeah. This is what he implied. Um, we do have that on our radar. We do recognize that, that that is something that we need to look into. And those are two separate conversations. And I don't know if the trade publications that I read that covered this story really broke it out like that. Like, it's two separate things. Is the CFPB willing to look at LO compensation and make changes? Currently, it's not on their agenda, but he said he's not taking that off the table. In fact, he went one step further and said, we're confident that there's plenty of things that were laid out in 2011, 2012, that don't really apply to 2024 and 2025. So we'll be looking at all of our current policies and looking to make certain tweaks, changes, um, in order to to better position the consumers and the banks and lenders that that um, serve the consumers to win, mm -hmm. right? We, we want consumers protected, um, and we want banks and lenders to to be able to thrive and survive. But so that's one coin. But the other side of the coin, the other side of the coin is we do recognize we do recognize that there have been and currently are. Lenders in operation, loan officers in operation, mortgage brokers in operation that are violating loan officer compensation rules as they were laid out in 2011. And we will be enforcing some action upon those people. So only time will tell because that is right now, if I were to say a, a hierarchy of needs, it sounds like servicing's number one, credit reports number two and potentially loan officer compensation. And that's the enforcement of the current policies uh, would be number three. And then finally, I wanted to cover this last part about was it a win when, like for the industry, was it a win that the Supreme Court voted seven to two? And the answer is yes, it was. And I know many people are like, what do you mean the CFPB is evil? The CFPB is, you know, they, they don't, 
you know, they're mean, they do this, they do that. It's like, mm, that's not up for debate. But here's what we do know. Since 2010, all the way through 2024, that's 14 years, our industry has changed everything about how we operate. The technology, the systems, the processes, vendor management, documents across the board to comply with the rules of the CFPB. Mm -hmm. Had they been ruled Mm -hmm. to be not constitutional, it would have absolutely upended the industry Mm -hmm. and it would have created chaos across the board. Just know that. Like, that's a whole nother topic, a whole nother episode. Mm -hmm. Just know that when you talk to the smartest of the smart people in our industry. Like me. the Like you, John. (laughs) The the people that you would think would be like, hell yeah, abolish the CFPB. When it comes down to the dollars and cents, and they're looking at the numbers, and we all know numbers don't lie, it would have benefited nobody for the CFPB to be abolished. Now, it could benefit all of us to have a CFPB that's willing to make adjustments, willing to um, work with the lenders and the in the banks that they regulate, and be willing to look at their current um, enforcement actions and their current way of, of setting policies, or even the policies that are in place, and make changes where appropriately where appropriate. Yes, that would make sense. But absolutely just abolishing the CFPB would have been chaotic for the industry and nothing any one of us who works in this industry would ever want to work through. Sounds like the bank bailout. Um, no, 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 <laughs> no. I mean, the, the meaning like we needed them. And if like we didn't bail out the banks, it would have been catastrophic for everybody. So, oh, now, yes, now, yes, there we go. Jesus Christ. Us. Yeah, yeah. Now bank, I'm picking yeah. up what you're yeah, putting down. Yeah, yes. Please. Yes, like, look, nobody wants the U.S. taxpayer to bail out banks and lenders, especially banks and lenders who are making risky decisions. Mm -hmm. And for the years leading up to it, just stacking fat. (laughs) I mean, stack, just stacking billions upon billions. Let's get this money. Yeah, but it it was the lesser of two evils, like letting it absolutely collapse or saving it. And yes, when it comes to the CFPB, the lesser of two evils would be to find ways to work within their parameters and with their leadership Mm -hmm. better than it would be to just go ahead and annihilate Mm -hmm. them, wipe them off the face of the earth, and then go back to this world of unknown kind of wild, wild west. Well said, Dustin. Awesome. So let's do this, John. If people dig what we do, do you know where they can find us? TLOPonline.com. TLOPonline.com. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to first make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Um, If you listen to us on Spotify or Apple, make sure you give us a five-star review. Across the board, make sure you're sharing this shit like often as if it's your job, but instead it's your hobby because we can't pay you. We have a newsletter that's free. If you go to tloponline.com, you can subscribe to the newsletter. It's specifically written by mortgage loan originators for mortgage loan originators. Mm -hmm. And then if you are a loan officer and you're looking to be a part of a community where you are coached, where you are trained, where you're given access to the tools and the resources that you need to become that next level success story, look our way dollar for dollar, pound for pound, bang for buck is the best thing going in the industry. Let our team of top producers invest in you because you recognize iron sharpens iron. On that note, we uh, look forward to seeing you in Vegas. If you're heading out to Mastermind Summit, if not, please know I will be in Jacksonville, Florida, two dates in June, and then I'm going to be down in um, Orlando for the FAMP event end of July, beginning of August. And if I get real lucky, I'm going to try to make it down to the Florida Association. Um, the Mortgage Bank Association of Florida is having their annual event. And if my schedule will allow for it, I'll try to slide down there for a day or two, but I'm not making any commitments on that. And then later in the fall, we're going to go hang out with the people uh, in Arkansas and Oklahoma. But on that note, he's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen. You have just tuned in to Loan Officer Podcast. That's all the time we have for you today. We do look forward to catching you on the next episode.